Good morning, friends. From today, we are starting a new series that is on the immunology, and I am starting from the immunity. I will try my best to clear uh, all the topic regarding this immunology because it, uh, the concepts are need to be clear while understanding these topics. So let's start. What's the immunity? So immunity basically how your body resist to any of the foreign substance which is entering your body. So and how your body responding to that. So that is the immunity. When we talk about of immunity, mainly the two type of immunity are there. One is the which you are having since birth and which you acquired in your lifetime. So today we will learn about the innate immunity. That is the immunity which you have since birth. So as I have you, I have already told you about the immunity at the resistance offered by the host against the any microorganism or the foreign substance. I have already told you that there are two type of immunity. One is the innate, which you have since birth, and another is the acquired immunity, which the person acquire in his or her lifetime. So this innate immunity. basically is because of this genetic or the constitutional makeup of that person so innate immunity that is the inborn resistance against the infection it is the first lines uh, first line of host defense and for the innate immunity you don't need any prior exposure that is the immune system is ready to act immediately in seconds or you can say in minutes So it doesn't need any prior exposure. The diversity is limited. That means that innate immunity is working specifically on few type of antigens. So that diversity is not so broad as compared to the acquired immunity. The non-specific. So this is non-specific. It is not that it is targeting any particular antigen. So it is non-specific. It will act on all the antigen and whatever it will enter. and then there is no memory so as we know in the acquired immunity is all the responses of memory cells only in innate immunity if the antigen enters the first time or it enters the second time or it enters multiple time every time the response will be same so the primary immune response and the secondary immune response which we see in case of the acquired immunity it is not being seen in the innate immunity so it remains the same there is no difference in the different type of immune responses so there are no memory and it is non specific so now how this innate immunity works so first thing occurs that is a receptor interaction first the any microorganism which has entered our body so it will bind to the uh, our cells to the host cell that is the receptor interaction by means of the attachment then comes the role of the microbial surface molecule that is the microorganism which has enter our body on their surface there are some repeated pattern conserved patterns of molecules are there which are present on the microbial surface and uh, what we say to these pattern that is a microb associated molecular patterns so like uh, on these uh, like they have the peptidoglycans lipopolysaccharide ticoic acid so all these have a particular repeated conserved pattern of the molecules are there then uh, this is the pattern recognition receptor which are present on the host cell they are also known as the toll like receptors so what is their property that they will recognize this mamp that is the microbe associated molecular pattern so that is how like first is the receptor interaction that the microorganism will bind to the host cells there are surface molecules present on the microorganism and there are toll like receptor present on the host cell now once they will bind to each other these toll like receptors and they mamps they will bind and they will activate the transcription factor that will stimulate the expression of the genes encoding the cytokines and enzymes and so then comes the that is how then it will play the role of the innate immunity now what is the difference between the innate immunity and the acquired immunity so as we know innate immunity is present since birth 
it doesn't need any prior exposure it is non specific no memory cell the same differences are there in case of the acquired immunity that is from since birth it is not present they uh, it take time uh, there will be some days exposure then it will your body will start making the antibodies then prior exposure is needed then the secondary immune response is much better in case of acquired immunity whereas it will remain same in case of the innate immunity in acquired immunity uh, the uh, the your immune system it will have a specific reaction to a specific antigen so the role will be a specific and it is dependent on the memory cells now what are the difference between the components of the uh, innate immunity and adaptive immunity that is in case of innate immunity what main is your anatomical barrier which is playing the role then there is a physiological barrier phagocytes are there like neutrophil macrophages monocyte natural killer cells then mast cells are the part of innate immunity dendritic cell and acute phase reactant protein in case of acquired immunity t cell b cell so you have to remember that these cells are the main role player like t and b cell other than that you have the classical complement pathway so alternate comes in the innate immunity classical pathway comes in the acquired immunity then antigen presenting cells and the cytokines few cytokines are on acquired side few cytokine are innate immunity so basically when you want to memorize that uh, which which cells are playing role in the innate or in the acquired in acquired you just remember the t cells and the b cells and the classical complement pathway in case of innate immunity you have this anatomical physiological barrier so they all are uh, the first role player when they uh, protect your body the main thing which you have to memorize are the phagocytic cells neutrophil macrophages monocyte natural killer cells so natural killer cell is the key point for the innate immunity mast cells and the dendritic cells so now what are the components of innate immunity so one is the first barrier that is anatomical or the physiological barriers so in anatomical barriers what all come that is your skin like that is uh, mechanically stopping entry of any of the microorganism then the skin also produce sebum and it also kills by the presence of the intraepithelial lymphocytes are there which can kill this microorganism then other than skin you have the mucosal surfaces so these mucosal surfaces they produce mucus and this mucus will prevent the entry of the microorganism then there is also cilia so what they uh, these cilia are present in the respiratory tract so they will what what is the property of these cilia that they will expel out the microorganisms then normal flora they will also inhibit the entry of other microorganisms then comes the physiological barrier so uh, the body temperature uh, that will also inhibit the growth of microorganisms ph security product then so in the security product i want to tell you like saliva tear so they have certain enzymes which will inhibit the like uh, your tear have lysozymes so they will uh, your gastric juices so they all will inhibit the or they will kill the any microorganism which enter so they all play a very major role in controlling the entry of the microorganism in your body then comes the phagocyte cells like the neutrophil macrophages monocyte they also play very very important role in uh, uh, having in the innate immunity then the natural killer cells so natural killer cells what are these natural killer cells sometimes a short note can come on the natural killer cell so these are the lymphocyte and they are have a large you can say they are large lymphocytes and they are granular that is a particular property of this natural killer cell that is they are large granular lymphocytes and they have the property that they can kill the tumor cell or they can kill the virus infected cell so particularly these natural killer cells have the activity against the tumor cell and the viral infected cells so that is very important and these natural killer cells they don't need any antigen presentation like uh, your t cell b cell these lymphocytes so they all need the antigen presenting cell but natural killer cells are totally different 
they are the component of innate immunity they don't need any antigen uh, presentation antigen presenting cell or any antigen presentation they can directly uh, act uh, they can directly act on the tumor cells or on the virus infected cells then comes the mast cells so these are the cells which are present on the epithelial lining of the respiratory tract so like we have seen in the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction so there the mast cell uh, plays an important role so uh, they are also a part of innate immunity and when they get activated either by the by, uh, by means of ige antibodies so they will release the histamines prostaglandins and cytokines and then different actions will be there on the different sites then comes the dendritic cells so they produce the cytokines and they can cause the inflammation so these dendritic cells uh, they are present in the interepithelial layer they have the property that they transport the antigen so whatever antigen is coming on the in contact with the skin so they will take the antigen and they will take up to the lymph nodes and then to the t cells then complement pathway so when we talk of alternate complement pathway that is a part of uh, this innate immunity where is the classical complement pathway that comes in the part of the acquired immunity so this alternate pathway and second is the manos binding pathway they all cause the lysis of the target molecules stimulate the inflammation now the inflammatory response so that is shown by uh, these cells that is the, they cause the whenever any microorganism enters so they occurs the vasodilation that is the blood supply occurs uh, is to increase in that in that uh, position or in that site from there the leakage occurs so leakage of all these uh, phagocytic cells they will reach to their site recruitment of the phagocytic cells there they will engulf the microorganism and finally they will destroy it so that is how this inflammatory response occurs which is a part of the innate immunity then the normal flora this normal flora which is present normal flora means the uh, the microorganism which are your friend so they are normally present in your body and they compete with the pathogen for the nutrition so they will inhibit the uh, this pathogenic microorganism to get established so that is how your normal flora is very helpful to you and it will also produce some antibacterial substances so that is a part of innate immunity and the cytokines are also there like tnf alpha interleukin 6 so they also directly play their role in the innate immunity then the acute phase reactant proteins so what are these acute phase reactant proteins certain proteins are being secreted by the liver and now uh, these protein have the property that they are increasing in certain condition and sometimes they are decreasing in certain condition like of inflammation so they will help you to know the condition in your body as well as helpful in diagnosing any inflammatory reaction in your body or any infection in your body so what are those acute phase reactant proteins like that is the serum amyloid a c reactive protein which is very important which we measure in case of the infection to know whether there is any infection there is sepsis so at many places most of the infection we go for the crp so uh, then haptoglobins are there so they all increase during the inflammation so if you want to know whether the body is having any inflammatory condition you can go for these tests and they will be very helpful if they are increased in their uh, quantity from the normal level then there are certain uh, these acute phase reactant proteins which decrease during inflammation like albumin transferrin and antithrombin now these APR or the acute phase reactant protein, they have the antimicrobial and anti-inflammatory activity. Therefore, they are increased during the inflammation. So C-reactive protein, already I have made a, a video particularly on the C-reactive protein because it comes as a short note. It is a very important diagnostic test which we usually go for most of the infection. So that can come as a short note also. So you can check from there also. Uh, our whole video is on there on the c reactive protein it rises in the acute inflammatory condition in the bacteria infection so uh, moderate increase has been seen in the bronchitis 
uh, your myocardial infarction or the malignancy and marked increase that is more than 10 mg so when it is less than 1 uh, it is usually being normal but mild increase has been seen in case of uh, like of in the heavy exercise or in the common cold and this marked increase when it is more than 10 mg per deciliter it will show that there is a acute bacterial infection or some major trauma is there so uh, we can have this c reactive uh, like latex agglutination testing is available there so that is a very good test and you can also have a uh, titer to know what is the exact level of C-reactive protein in your body. Then there is another highly sensitive CRP test where we are measuring very minute increase in the CRP that is seen in case of the uh, this atherosclerosis or cardiovascular disease uh, that is being measured by the nephalometry. So that's all for the uh, this innate immunity hope you must have understood this topic well if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section and soon i will come with the acquired immunity if you like the video uh, please give a thumbs up and share with your friends and uh, i'm very thankful to you for paying so much attention thank you